should be played at high, high volume, preferably in a residential area. Boom today, all you sports fans out there. This is the OMSR. Welcome to your brief but very concise host, Will the Alternative Eastern Sports Row. Limited space here on this, the OMSR set. All right, briefly and concisely, so you know the highlights coming up here. It's not 10 minutes of me. Might have to split this up into two parts. This is what I do. Talking, uh, you know, the two teams on the outside looking in. So with regard to Georgia and Ohio State. I will just say briefly with regards to Georgia, there's still a whole heck of a lot of SEC love going on out there. And this is a little bit of a slight. No offense, Texas, in my view. It should have been Georgia UCF. It's not on the level of the, that travesty of all travesties of the BCS. What happened at Kansas State? No one's really talking about that with Coach Bill Steiner's retirement. You'll hear that a couple times here on the OMSR, but you, you'll see, you'll hear from Kirby Smart and you can just hear and see. He handled it as, as well as he could. I, I submit maybe he could have done a little, little better of a job. Uh, the disdain he felt for this process. We have the makings of an epic Rose Bowl coming on. Obviously yours truly is a UW booster, but I have a lot of, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for Urban Meyer who coached at my alma mater. Kept the, the one coach he kept from the old Staff, my former walk-on coach, Kyle Whittingham. Good decision there. And so suddenly, you know, given the decision, or rather the news, both that broke today, this has turned out to be like the game. Maybe even more so than the CFP. Call me crazy, but it, it's, you couldn't write this into a script. The potential producers would look, look at it and go, it's too contrived, it's too convenient, it's not believable, it's amazing, you all would agree, how sports sometimes can turn out that way. And I know what I speak, my significant other is a big wig at SAG, wrote a few scripts, and so what's called a contrivance that shows up throughout in a screenplay, those don't get greenlit. And yet somehow we have the number one winning as coach, active, versus number two winningest coach, active. For all of Jake Browning's struggles this year, he's the winningest QB in Pac-12 history. Dwayne Haskins just had the best single season in Big Ten history. Are you freaking kidding us? Awesome. Wish Coach Urban Meyer well. This is going to be the best single game to watch, I submit to you. All right, thanks for watching. No silly DUIs while you're out there. This way. is for Jalen Hurts. Now, a lot of hot air there for Georgia. As unfortunately, they lose against Alabama, but now in the All-State Sugar Bowl, that's a consolation prize. You get to hang out on Bourbon Street on New Year's Eve and then January 1st, play 845 Eastern against the Texas Longhorns. Man, Tom Herman and company seeking their first 10 win season since 2009. Kirby Spark wanted to get in, but he took the high road today. We did what we could. We went out and played a great Alabama football team and what was a... <laughs> Game, but uh, we were just, uh, <coughs> again the committee. Well, we had an opportunity. We didn't quite. take advantage of it. Certainly played a really high quality team, but we're really excited for the opportunity we've got going forward and getting to go play in the Sugar Bowl. And you've got a really quality opponent in the form of Texas, who we've got a lot of respect for and a great atmosphere. We're gonna kind of meet halfway, uh, get to play in, in one of the all-time classic bowls. Well, Kirby Sport definitely, as I said, taking the high road there. When you look at these two programs, Texas and Georgia, what stands out for you here, Craig? The fact that this is a sign of things to come. Because Georgia is supposed to be the bridge here. You know, you lose all those great players on the deep at the side of the football. You're reloading. You're so young at so many different spots, and yet they reel off an 11-1 season and come within 10 minutes of potentially beating, or excuse me, one minute of potentially beating Alabama. And then Texas way they're recruiting and what Tom Herman's got going. I've been willing to say this, guys, and I said this a little while ago. Oh, I know this. You ready? Yeah. Oh, I, say it. I like it. I like no, it. No, no, it's a new audience right now. Here we Here's go. Here we go. Chest. This is a preview <laughs> of the 2019 college football playoff semi Final game. Oh, you oh. didn't say it last time. Last I time? did say oh, the oh, national oh, championship. You just no, he, he heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, 
talking about. <laughs> These two teams are just scratching the surface of what they're eventually going to become. Now, yeah. it, well, there's only two spots available because Alabama and Clemson have the other two. Exactly. So, yeah. so continue. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. <laughs> but I really, I really am, tr I'm trusting that Kirby Smart is going to continue to recruit at a high level, and that Tom Herman, the, the seeds that they've planted on the defensive side over the last two years, start to take hold next year, and those. Freshmen become stars here very soon. So I'm very excited about the trajectory of both programs. I tell you what, if I'm thinking about Texas, I, I agree with you about Georgia. I, I think you start looking on the field. I was looking on the field late in the game, and you're just going number one, number 99, number yeah. 56, number 41. Freshman, 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 freshman. I mean, they're all back. It's, yeah. They're all back. They, they have five seniors on their team. I think they've proved Jake Fromm's back. The whole offense is back. They're going to lose a couple guys on defense. Texas, to me, still has a huge area of weakness, and it's the trenches. They have to get better on the line. Yeah. They look like I agree that they definitely got some mojo back for Texas, but that's a bold statement. That's what we do here. Make bold I like that. I feel really statements. good about the future of these two do you programs. Feel, do you feel the same way? I feel very good about Georgia. I don't feel as strongly about Texas. Georgia needs to fight complacency because you have a team that has a lot of success and they're young. And what happens when we know so you get into the off season, you get into the weight room, all of a sudden you're not lifting as hard. All of a sudden you're not running as hard. And next thing you know, it's like, we got it. We got it, right? The young guys, we got it. And then the season comes, bomb, and it hits you. And it reminds me of how they started off the season where they were kind of, as I said, exactly. slopping through yeah. these wins, and it finally took a loss for yep. them to snap out of it. So I hope that they can find a way to fight through that complacency in the offseason, and I do see them really uh, making a run next season. And yeah, we're fighting through complacency. We're also fighting through ageism here, because we're going to roll in some video here for the 1984 <laughs> Cotton Bowl. That's right. Texas and right. Georgia. We're, we're eschewing the uh, millennial demographic. I, really I, I was the only one that was <laughs> I was six years old. I remember yeah. fondly going up in... Uh, Eastern Ontario. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. game uh -huh. up there. Yeah, yeah. Great coverage. We're really definitely did. watching this game. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> a little option football. Yeah, here, here's Ed Van Reed. Uh, number 12 ran right, and uh, the coach got picked up. I can yeah. tell you this was a 10-9 final. That's all I remember about that game. What, what thought on Georgia? I do want to throw to you, Greg. The yeah. fact that those running backs went Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle, and they yeah. replenished. Hey, we got a Holyfield. Yeah. Hey, we've got um, the Andre Swift. Swift. Like, those guys yeah. are amazing. Yeah. Awesome. And, and by the way, they have Cook, who's going right. to be really good. And Tamir White, Tamir White. who's yeah. going to be coming as well. But it's these two running backs that are so dynamic. The Andre Swift, even more so than Holyfield. Like, Holyfield's steady, right. solid between the tackles. But DeAndre Swift is Don't a complete game changer. And since he's been healthy, the offense has been going at a whole new click. And, I agree. And, and, and he's, he was, you talked about Chubb and Michelle. And you watch these guys last year and you go, one and 27 are really good. Yeah. Seven's different. And, and you watch him out of the backfield as a receiver. He, by the way, he's built, he's about as tall as this table. <laughs> and his quads are, are like that. It's like tackling a tree stump. But he's shifting. Tall as a table, tree stump, very quads. Stump. And, and that's two times he's talked about quads. But you know what that means. Oh, I know. TVs, that's called business decisions. They, don't they come over there like, they don't nah, bro, I don't want to do that. So. He is the guy, really, that, that makes it go. And, and, and it's no surprise the running game wasn't as dynamic. He had double groin surgery in January. It wasn't no surprise that down the stretch, you could see he was getting healthy. That offensive line, all of a sudden, when he makes a guy miss in the hole, he it takes it to the house. It's like, oh, yeah, that offensive line's really good. Well, he also helps them. He makes them look up. Always legit scared when you see, you know what that means. I'm like, save it for the club. Here <laughs>